Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a planner in a crazy little stand. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, domain, or online store, make it with Squarespace. We have a lot of plants in our house. My wife loves to pick up really interesting looking things, but she doesn't always like the containers that they come in. So she keeps asking me to make planners. I'm finally gonna make one for her out of some teak that I have, and I'm gonna use this as an excuse to 3D print something I've been thinking about for a while. Let's do it. I wanted to make this planner out of 12 pieces. 360 degrees divided by 12 is 30. So each joint needs to be 30 degrees. And since that joint is made up of two pieces, each one of those needs to be cut at 15 degrees. So I ripped this full piece down to 15 degrees on each side and then cut 12 pieces to the same length. Now I've never done any segmented turning projects, but I have watched a whole lot of Frank Howarth. He's amazing, by the way. If you've never seen his videos, they'll be linked down below. Frank does lots of different turning projects with really complex shapes. This one is really simple, but I'm using some of the same methods that he uses to glue it up. Because this is a simple glue up, blue tape works really well to hold the pieces in place on the outside edge while rolling it up into a cylinder. Once I got it rolled up, I added some more tape to lock everything in and made sure that all of the pieces lined up on the outside. Ultimately, this is gonna get turned down, so if they don't line up perfectly, it's not a huge deal. Once I had it all lined up pretty well, I added some more tape just to lock it in and make it as tight as I could. Another way to do this would be to add a strap clamp all the way around it and ratchet it tight. Next, I needed a way to mount this on the lathe. I traced the outside shape of this on a piece of plywood and cut that out on a bandsaw. I added lots of glue to the planner and glued this piece back into the place where I had traced it. And before I cut that piece out, I did make sure to mark the center of that shape. And after that dried, I used that center point to mount the faceplate so that I could put it on the lathe. I knew going into it that this piece was not going to be perfectly centered, so I made sure to take my time and turn it very carefully at first. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you want to start an online store, launch a podcast, or maybe start a blog to show off what you do, Squarespace is an awesome way to get up and running very quickly. You don't have to know how to do any programming, there's nothing to install or upgrade. You start with one of their beautiful templates and then customize the site from there. If you've already got a domain, you can transfer it over or you can just get one through Squarespace. If you want to try out the service, you can do that for free by going to squarespace.com slash ILTMS. Once you get the site built and you're ready to launch, use the code ILTMS to get 10% off off your first purchase. Be sure to go check it out. It's an awesome service and a great way to build a site. Thanks, Squarespace. So that was a little bit scary. This thing did explode and luckily I saw it coming, was able to step out of the way, I'm fine. Um, and I had a face shield on. So if anything had hit my face, I would have been in pretty good shape. But. That one's no good, so I'm gonna put that aside. Followed the same procedure to make another one. Now what I think happened on that other one was that the glue was probably not completely dry. And this one's made out of teak, which is a very oily wood. So there's a possibility that the glue didn't actually soak in everywhere that I wanted it to. And if that's the problem, the same thing will probably happen to this one. So we're gonna try this one out and see. After that, I made sure to take my time and not try to cut off too much in any pass. In fact, I probably was a little more cautious than I really needed to be. This one turned out just fine. But basically, I'd never turned anything segmented and I'd never turned anything this big. And it was offset a little bit from the center point. So there were a lot of things that I was just trying to figure out as I was doing it. Last time I tried to taper something, I got a lot of really great suggestions from you guys in the comments and I used some of those when tapering this. Now granted, the taper is very slight from one into the other, but your suggestions really helped, so thanks for that. After I got the outside turned to a cylinder, I added the taper and then started working on the bottom on the inside. And this really just had to be a circle deep enough to be able to put in a bottom plate. I went in about three quarters of an inch. Then I went back and worked on the taper some more, trying to get the profile even and straight and the bottom to be thin, but not too thin. One of the great suggestions that I got in the comments before about getting a flat outside shape to a turned piece is to put a piece of sandpaper on a block. 
then use that against the outside to sand it flat. So simple, but it worked great. The last little step was to flatten out the bottom face to make sure that it would sit on the table, and then I used a parting tool to start to separate it from the base that I had glued it onto. I cut in a groove right where the two pieces of wood met, but then I started to worry that it was going to fly off again. I slowed down the lathe and ended up reversing the direction before using a pull saw to actually cut it loose. This way I could hold it in place to make sure that it wouldn't fly away. I went back and forth between these two, just trying to figure it out as I've never done this part of it before. Eventually, I just took it to the bandsaw and cut it away. And after this, I measured the opening on the bottom of the planter and cut a circle of teak that would fit in there perfectly. I cut it a little bit oversized and then used the disc sander to round out the edges to make sure that it was a nice snug fit. And once it fit well, I glued it in place. Teak is a great water resistant wood, so you can use this inside or outside, and depending on where you're going to use it, you may want to choose a different finish. I used this tongue oil finish that I use on a lot of things because we're probably planning on keeping this inside the house. I've got a couple of coats of finish on this, so I'm going to call it done. It's very simple, you could add lots of detail if you wanted to. I like things that look really basic like this, but this is not the entire project. I also wanted to make a stand to set it on. I've had this idea for a while about making geometric shapes with 3D printed pieces and pencils. So we modeled and printed these connectors and this one in particular has four angles that are exactly the same and the diameter of the circle fits right around a pencil as long as you take off the eraser fairing. And for this particular one with the same angles, if you have six of these and 12 pencils, you can stick them together to make a diamond. The cool thing about this system is that you can actually turn it into a lot of different things. In this case, it's going to be a stand for the planner, but you could also run wire through it and turn it into a light fixture. And it doesn't have to look like this. These pieces are printed out of a silver PLA, but you could print them out of any color you want or paint them or go on Shapeways and have these printed out of metal. There you could get them in all sorts of different metal finishes and they would be really strong. And even for the pencils, you don't have to use black or even the typical yellow pencils, you could use colored pencils and come up with all sorts of really cool looking structures. You can swap out the color palette for the pencils to maybe match your surroundings or the plant that you're putting on it or whatever. Just by changing the color palette of the pencils, you get an entirely different piece. Plus, you can make it even more unique by swapping out the finish on the connectors. Now, one note, not all pencils are created the same. From company to company, the diameter of the pencils changes a little bit. So, if yours is a little bit loose, you can always put in a dab of CA glue into each one of the connectors and that'll hold it tight. Let's try this out. So there it is, a really simple planner and a cool little stand to put it on. One note about the planner though, mine's made out of teak, which is really water resistant, so I'm not worried about it rotting, but if you have a different wood, you want to make sure that you put drainage holes in the bottom, and you also probably want to put the plant in a container that's going to hold all the water. And if you're interested in the connectors to make your own stand or light fixture or whatever you want to do with it, I'll have the files available that you can download and print out yourself. But they'll also be up on Shapeways, so you can go over there and look at all the different materials they have and actually have them printed out in metal. All the info will be down in the description, be sure to go check that out. I'd love to know what you think about this one, let me know down below in the comments. I've got lots of other videos that you may be interested in, so check some of those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one guys, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. I had this idea a while ago about, mm, I've had this idea for a while about making gym, mm, but with just, but with, but. Mm-hmm. <sighs>